Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is the third video in this Prius rebuild. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on the bottom end. We're gonna pull off the oil pan, take off our connecting rod caps, and then pop our pistons out. Now I have pulled the oil pan off of a Gen 2 Prius before, and I have some of that footage, so you may see an interchange of footage with this vehicle and a previous vehicle. Just to save me a little time, it's kind of hard filming underneath the vehicle when you're laying on the ground. If everything goes smoothly, we may actually do some prep work and get the pistons reinstalled and all our new bottom end bearings, but we'll see how that goes. Let's get started. Because I have to remove the jack to get the oil pan off, what I have is a board that looks like a two by three with a ratchet strap. I think that's plenty to hold it. It's a light engine plus we still have some transmission mounts. So even if this fails, this engine isn't falling all the way to the ground. So that's what I have supporting it up here. Now let's go under. It's got this little washer that doesn't want to come off. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull off the AC compressor and just suspend it aside. They look like 12s. So there's just three bolts, one on top, two on the bottom. I'm gonna get a bungee cord. Maybe I'll just use this for like a brake caliper. You know, it actually might just suspend there just like that. I think that's out of the way. Sweet. Well, that was easy. Let's pull our torque strut bolts out and our bell housing bolts just to make sure we can get those ones. 19 millimeter. Use a breaker bar for these. Uh, wasn't too bad. Try this one here. Oh no, not too bad. All right, I'll just loosen this back one so we can pivot the whole thing down. Ooh, nice. And they have these nuts on the back side with that little wing on it. So you can't pull the nut off. You have to loosen it from the bolt. Let's pop those out. Nice. We'll just leave that hanging. Okay, bell housing bolts look like a 14. Okay, this one. Oh, easy. Nice. Okay, these are all 10 millimeter. All right. So a metal putty knife works the best. What we wanna do is get something in between the main oil pan and this little oil pan. Now it is just silicone holding it together, so maybe just... Uh, this isn't, isn't quite working. There we go, oh, oil. I move you just a little. All right, there we go. So underneath this pan are those three bolts that we have to get off. Looks like from here, everything is a 12 millimeter and it's just our perimeter bolts. Oh, I forgot, underneath the oil filter, we gotta get that out. Let me get that Allen size. That is a 12 millimeter Allen. Ugh. There we go. You just pull on this out, it's the threads for the uh, oil filter. The tip of it, there's a little Allen key, 12 millimeter, that comes out. There's a bolt underneath. Okay, I'm gonna go around and just loosen them. Oh, that wasn't too bad. All right, let me double check that was all of them. I think it is. So there's a little plate right here. It looks like where a starter motor would go, but because this is a hybrid, there's no starter motor. So let me pull that plate off. Okay, got it. All right, here we go. Should be able to just pry it down. I'll give you a little pry spot right here. There we go. There's a little spot here we can get on. Nice. Let's go under and take a peek. Okay, so here's the plan. This is the front of the engine here with our red strap. Our connecting rod caps. One, two is up here. 
three is up here, and then four is right here. They have a little protrusion on the cap that faces forward towards the front of the engine, but they're not numbered. So I'm gonna take a permanent marker, mark just one dash on cylinder number one, two dashes on cylinder number two, three on three, four on four. And that'll keep me organized because each cap belongs to its own connecting rod. We don't wanna swap them around. Once the caps are pulled off, we can push the piston up from down here, just push it right on through. They should pop out pretty easy. The cap bolts are a 10 millimeter 12 point. Let's crack it loose. All right, I'm just gonna take this off. Okay, I'm just gonna push this piston up until it pops out the top. Okay, that's it. Piston number one. That's all of them. There they are, pretty little pistons all in a row. They actually don't look too bad. This engine was burning oil, and I was thinking that this little oil ring down here, the third ring at the bottom, would be our culprit. I thought it would be seized and no longer springy, but they are pretty springy on every single one of them. Doesn't mean it can't be the oil ring, but I was expecting it to be a little more uh, damaged. Rod bearings look good, but of course we're gonna replace those. We're gonna clean up the pistons really well. We're gonna reuse the old pistons, just install new rings. Let me show you on the car. I'm looking at this block here and I'm thinking, what prevents me from removing the block the rest of the way out of the vehicle? I imagine at this point it's pretty light. It's an aluminum block. The crankshaft will be the heaviest part, so I don't think it'll be too heavy. There's just a few things to disconnect up front. One little bracket in the back there for the exhaust. And really it's just a few upper transmission bolts. And that's it. And this thing can, could probably just fall out the bottom. Now that it's super small, might be able to handle it. Then what I could do at that point is take the block to the machine shop and have them run it through their parts washer and get this thing looking shiny brand new. That also gives me plenty access to the main crank bearings. Now you can replace the main crank bearings in vehicle. Maybe I'll show you that first in case you're not gonna pull yours the rest of the way out, how you can replace those main bearings. So I'll show you just one. But getting this block out will also allow me to replace that rear main seal. Get a nice fresh rear main seal in here. So I think that's the plan. Let me set you up. And let's get this bad boy out. I'm gonna demonstrate on this front one how you can replace the main bearings with the block still in the vehicle. Now, just like everything else, each cap needs to go back in its specific spot. Now, these do have a stamp on them. This is stamp number one. And the shape of where the stamp is kind of makes like an arrow pointing forward. So what we want to do is just crack every single one loose. Ugh, whew, that's tight. Wow, that's really tight. Got myself a bigger breaker bar. Okay, just crack all of them loose. And then on all of them, we're gonna bring the bolts down just a smidge, a few threads to make clearance. And then this main cap will take all the way out. There we go. So this bearing here is really easy to replace, but it's getting this one behind the crankshaft, that's the trick. So I'm gonna get the jack real quick back under here so we can get this tie strap out of the way because we need the crankshaft to just come down just a smidge. So I need this removed. Okay, with a light pry bar, we want to see if we can get this crankshaft to come down just a smidge. Sometimes they get suction to their spot. There we go. So I'll move just a little bit. And now I'll take a skinny flathead and we can push that bearing out. There we go. That's it. Just like that. Then we can get our new bearing. We want to grease up the inside really well and then grease up our shaft here. And we should be able to just slide it around right into place. Give it some taps. And there, till it's flush, and that's it. And then you would just do that to all the rest. Then we put our new bearing in our cap. You always wanna lay it in the cap dry, and then lubricate the inside here. And we'll just put it on. That's it, and then we would torque it down. Then we'll take care of the torque specs when this block is on the bench. But that's how you do it, and you just do the rest just like that. I'm gonna take this heater hose pipe off, 10 millimeter. And there's a couple of brackets, one here in the front. And that's it, maybe just that one bracket. Got our oil pressure sensor connector. We have a bracket for our AC compressor wiring harness, 10 mil. Take our big harness off of this wire harness retainer. We also have the thermostat we can remove. We can also remove this oil dipstick. Set that out of the way for now. Thermostat, 10 mil. 
All right, I think front is all done. And we just have that one bracket in the back for the exhaust. I'm gonna get those from up here, the 14 mil. All right, pull that out. Okay, everything else is transmission bolts. See if we can find them all. One on top right here, 14 millimeter. Another one on top back here, easy to see. We need a shallow 14. So those top two are facing that direction. So the bolt threads in towards the block. Then there's one on the side here that threads in towards the transmission. Also a 14. Going under to see if I can see any more. Looks like that's it, just those three. So the block should be free. I'm gonna leave this on for now. I'm gonna get a jack underneath just as extra support. You guys see okay? Let me put you in a different spot. Okay, so I still have this in the front, but it's loose. Then I have the jack in the back. I'm just gonna try to break this free from the dowels. Okay, maybe tighten this up a little. There we go, got it. There, it's completely free. So let me lower this, lower my jack a little. I'm just gonna push the whole thing through. Nice. Make sure nothing's stuck on it. Lower this in the front. Nice, and then lower the jack. So hold on to it. All right, the CV axle just a smidge. There we go. I like having the strap on just as a security measure, but probably don't need it. You gotta love tiny little engines. There it is. Nice cute little engine block right out of the bottom. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, that was kind of impromptu. I was not expecting that to be so easy. What I'm gonna do is just disassemble the block right here and we'll take the block to the machine shop. They'll clean it all up, make it look really nice. What's nice about recording this part is it's easy to look back, figure out where all these little bolts go. Pull out our thermostat. There we go. And of course this rebuild will be getting a new thermostat. Pull this little gasket off. 12 mil deep for our knock sensor. And honestly, even if you did not have a knock sensor code, I would go ahead and throw on a brand new knock sensor. Get a good quality brand. It's stamped right here, Denso. That's the OEM for this vehicle. Because of where it lives, if that does go bad in the future, it's gonna be a pain, so just get a new one. 24 mil for an oil pressure sensor. Okay, that takes care of this side. And I think the other side, we just have this for our coolant. We don't necessarily have to take it off, but we'll go ahead and take it off. Maybe. There we go. And this is something weird. Let me show you. I've been noticing on this. You see that right here? It's a bunch of rocks. Those rocks have been there a while because they got a bunch of oil and stuff on them. That's just so weird. So now I'm going to flip it over. Put the towel on here. So I'm gonna pull the flywheel and crankshaft off at the same time. I'm not gonna meddle with all of this stuff over here, just the crankshaft. Now we already busted these loose. They should be pretty easy to come off. The 12 mil, 12 point. Okay, now the whole thing should lift out. These bearings are pretty pressed in there. So just a little hammer, wiggle it back and forth. Wish there was a little spot. Oh, right on this side there is. Somebody read my mind. Thanks, Toyota. So on this side of the bearing cap, there's a little spot for a pry bar. There we go. Yeah, Toyota thinks of everything. Perfect. There we go. All right, I think this is a good spot to stop this video. We got a lot accomplished, pulled off the bottom end, actually pulled out the block, was not expecting to do that, but it worked out so well. Next time I have a Prius rebuild, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Pull off the head, pull off the bottom end, and then just take the block right out. And you can do this with just jack stands. That's all I have it up on is jack stands. So that's perfect. No hoist or cherry picker needed. Perfect. So, so far, awesome, no special tools either. So this has all been done with standard tools. The block is off to the machine shop. They're just gonna run it through their parts washer, double check a few things on it. And it'll come back looking nice. In the next video, it'll be just assembling everything back together. The engine that is. So just the main core engine components, the bottom end, the top end, the timing. We'll get all that in the next video. Maybe a little longer, it'll be a little more detailed, a little more meticulous, 
but we'll have fun. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Any questions, comment down below. See you on the next one.